Welcome back to the Gemini Connect studio. This is Susie and today we are here to talk about something a little different than camera gear. We're here to talk about workflow or what you should do before, during and after a photo shoot before you even start editing. So why is this an important topic? Well, let me tell you that three years ago, I was flown out to Utah. I was working for this exact same client that I just worked with in Chicago, and I did an event shoot for them over three days. And I shot a lot of media, and I was copying it over to a single hard drive. And when I got home, I plugged that hard drive into my computer, and I watched with horror as all of my photos literally disappeared before my eyes because my hard drive had gotten corrupted. I thought, oh no, there's no way that I'm going to keep this client, I'm going to be in so much trouble, this is just the end of my business. It was a really awful feeling, but luckily I unconsciously had kept all of my memory cards. I had never formatted them, so I still had a copy on my memory cards. And so it wasn't the end of the world, but it was still a really awful feeling. And as a result of that shoot, I have developed this structure where I keep better track of all of my memory cards. And today I'm going to share that workflow um, tip with you and give you some ideas about how you can keep better track of your memory cards and your hard drives and just make sure that none of your media goes accidentally missing. So before we dive in, let's talk about what you should do before you even start shooting. So the first thing you want to do is take all of the cameras that you plan to use and make sure that they are all synced in terms of time and date. And for most cameras, this is something that you do when you first break it out of the box. And it's something that should never change. But I do have a couple of cameras, namely the GoPro Hero 7 Black, which for some reason always has the date and time reset. It resets to like the year 2000 at midnight. And this is really important because a lot of times you're going through your media, especially after several days of shooting, you're trying to find a particular shot. And really the only way that you can find it is to look it up by time and date. And if your cameras are off, then it's just a nightmare trying to find that media. So make sure all of your cameras are properly synced. The next thing you're going to want to do is, if your camera allows for it, go in and make like a custom folder. Make sure that your media is going into a easily recognizable or a custom name. It also might be a good idea to go in and change the file names for all of your photos just to make sure that it's recognizable which camera that they're coming from. And again, this is something that isn't available on all cameras, but certain cameras such as the Sony a7R 3 make it really easy to go in and customize those settings. Next. Invest in lots of memory cards and also a silver Sharpie. So on this particular trip that we did in Chicago, it was uh, four solid days of shooting, both photo and video. So in preparation for that, we bought a lot of SD cards. And again, all of our cameras use either SD cards or micro SD cards, so it was really easy to just buy a whole bunch of them. And all these memory cards are different sizes, but we have a lot of 64 gigs and 128 gigs and a couple of 256 gigs. So just buy high capacity memory cards and the silver Sharpie is important just because you wanna take each of those memory cards and flip it over in the back and write your initials and maybe a number, something to differentiate each of those memory cards. And again, this is more important if you're dealing with as many memory cards as we are and also multiple shooters because you want to keep track of whose cards are whose, which cards have been used, which cards are available. And another thing you want to do is invest in a memory card case. This is a Pelican case and um, it holds SD cards and micro SD cards and I also put a tile on it just in case it goes missing because I have lost my memory card wallet before and again it's just one of those sinking feelings. Um, so if you have something like Tile, it helps you keep track of it. It just gives you that peace of mind. And then within that memory card case, I have a system where if a memory card is full or used, then I flip it over so we see the back. And if a memory card is available, then it is flipped with the label facing forward. But as you can see, all these memory cards are full, full, full. So, all right, the next thing you want to do is invest in external hard drives. The nice thing about external hard drives is that they're pretty cheap and so you can get like terabytes of, of space for like a couple hundred dollars or less. 
And so I usually travel with four external hard drives. I have two of these Lacey um, Tough hard drives. They are each four terabytes in size. Um, before I did video, I didn't find the need to carry more than a terabyte at a time. But now that I'm doing video, I've been needing more space. So four terabytes um, just gives me that peace of mind that I have enough space. And so we have two of these and one is Martin's, one is mine. And as we are traveling, he carries one, I carry the other. And we have carbon copies of the data on each of these hard drives. Now these hard drives, despite being four terabytes, are actually quite cheap. And the reason is they're really slow. So they're not great to work off of, um, especially if you're doing video, like they're just extremely slow. The playback is awful. So these for me are more like archive drives. These are not drives that I would work off of, but they are great for just having copies of your data. And in addition to that, I also carry two of these SSD hard drives. These are by Samsung. This is the T3, the older version, but the T5 is out. And again, they've come down in price, so they're not too bad, but they are a lot more expensive than these other hard drives. And these are the drives that you really want to work off of, especially if you're dealing with raw photos or video. Having an SSD is just gonna make your workflow 10 times faster. These are each a terabyte, and I don't really deal with these until I'm ready to start working on a project. Okay, so now that we have gone over all of the things that you need before you start shooting, let's talk about what you should do while you're shooting. So on this trip to Chicago, we had six different cameras and a total of 13 different SD cards floating around out there, which is one of many reasons why I've had to stick to a workflow like this, just to make sure that we were keeping track of all that data. But as we were shooting, I made it a point to make sure that we were previewing our media, not, every, not after every time we shot, but just at frequent intervals. And this came in extremely handy because um, after day one, Martin noticed that our Fujifilm 18-55 seemed to be losing focus. So we had a bunch of different photos and videos with really soft focus and we pinpointed it on the lens and we caught it early enough where we stopped using that lens. And if we hadn't been previewing that media, we could have easily gone the rest of the shoot not knowing that we were shooting faulty photos and videos and that would have been really bad. So it's a good idea to make sure that you're checking your media as you're shooting because things can happen. And right now that lens is on its way back to Fujifilm and hopefully we will get it repaired or replaced or find out what's wrong with it. And also at the end of every shoot, at the end of every day, it's a good idea to sit down with your media and make sure that you copy it over to these hard drives. And that can be really challenging, especially when you're on your feet working all day. But after each day, I stayed up that extra hour and I made sure to go through that media again, just to check it, make sure that the quality was good, but also to copy it over twice to each of these hard drives. And another reason for that is that Ever since that trip to Utah where I thought I accidentally lost all of my photos on my faulty hard drive, I never format a memory card until I'm done editing that shoot. And that again can be really difficult when you have like a two or three month deadline or if you're doing like photos for fun and you're not really sure when those photos are gonna get edited. So that's another reason for having just a big library of SD cards. Buy them whenever they're on sale. Stock up, because you never know when you're gonna need them. But I never format those cards. And again, that's just that security of knowing that I have that original media and I can go back and find it if I happen to need it. So now that we've gone over all of that, let's jump into the computer and I'll show you how I organize that media on all of these hard drives. Okay, so now that we're in the computer, here is one of the Lacey 4 terabyte hard drives. And in here we have a folder with all of the media from the Chicago trip. And these are just all of those memory cards. They've just been copied over, you know, dragged and dropped, and they're all in here sorted by the folders. And within each of the folders, I also make sure to note how many items are in there. And that I found has been really essential because a lot of times as you're copying um, over that media, 
sometimes maybe your hard drive gets full or just your computer falls asleep and it doesn't quite finish copying all of those files. So it's really important to go back and double check and make sure that all of your media has been copied. And so another thing that really helps me keep track of all of this media is this Google Doc. And so this really brings me back to my corporate days when I was a financial analyst and I basically lived and breathed Microsoft Excel. So I know Excel extremely well and oddly enough, I'm still using it for projects like this where I have to keep track of things with lots of details. And um, I've made all these categories based on the information that I may need at some point. So in the first category, we have the names of each of the memory cards so that I know which card has what content. Is it a photo of content, video content? How many items are on it? Which camera was shooting it? Is it backed up? If so, which hard drive is it on? What's the folder name? Has that card been formatted? Has it been archived? all these details. And having this much detail, again, just goes back to what if I'm shooting something, I need to find a certain file, I'm not sure where it was, maybe I need to you know, go back and check that card, maybe I accidentally formatted that card and I have to do some recovery on it. And so this just helps me identify which cards have which content. And speaking of accidentally formatting your cards, that is something that is all too common. I am guilty of that myself. I've done that. I actually just did that two weeks ago. It's really awful. And luckily I was able to recover that data, um, but that is a subject for a whole other video. If you'd like to hear more about what to do if you accidentally format your memory card, then leave me a comment below and I'll make a video talking about that whole strategy. And again, because these hard drives are slower, this is just like a reference or a copy of all the data. I won't actually be working off of these. In fact, let's actually move over to the SSD, the working SSD that i have been working off of earlier today. All right, so here's the T5. So within the T5, I have a very similar folder. In fact, I actually dragged and dropped the full take from this uh, hard drive over to the SSD. And then within that SSD, I went in and I reorganized all of these files according to date. So if we go into one of them, you'll see that we have multiple folders again, but I went through all of these memory cards and I made sure to organize. So this is all of Martin's photos from Thursday, June 27th in one folder. Then I have all of his videos in another folder. I have all of my photos in other folders. And this again just helps me for when I'm actually ready to edit or when I need to find those files. And this whole process sometimes is actually easier depending on your camera. So that's why earlier I mentioned that if your camera allows for it, you might want to set up custom file names or custom folders within your camera because that can really help you as you're going through and trying to organize your media after the fact. So this is a really good example because this is a Sony card and within Sony, Sony's great because I've managed to set it up so that um, I can make it, or it automatically makes a folder based on the date. So right here, so that first part of it's a little cryptic, but after this, here's the actual date. So this, these are all the photos from June 29th, all in here. Another thing that is a little tricky with Sony and maybe other camera brands is that Sony actually separates their photo files from their video files, which is a little annoying. And I remember the first time I shot with my Sony and I was like, I just shot a bunch of video and I know it should be in here, but it's not. So where is it? And you actually have to go into private, double click here, M4 root, double click there, and then clip. So it's like three folders deep and then you'll find all your video files in there. All right, so in a nutshell, that is really how my workflow is going these days um, after a big photo video shoot. Uh, this is a super manual process, but I actually prefer that it's manual um, just because I'm already relying so much on technology. I'm relying on memory cards, hard drives, cameras, computers, all kinds of things that can possibly go wrong. So in this case, I prefer to keep it manual because at least I'm the one making sure that everything is copied over. I think that there are some programs out there that you know make clones of your folders and your data, but for right now, I'm preferring the manual way of doing things just to make sure that 
everything goes the way that it should. But with that said, I would love to hear from you if you have any suggestions or ideas about how to make this workflow better or more efficient. What things do you do that help you keep track of your data or your memory cards? Let me know in the comments below. And also let me know if you like this format of videos. Uh, we're trying to do things outside of just gear videos and show you more about what we do uh, for client projects. So if you'd like to hear more about those topics, please let us know, give us a thumbs up, and comment below on some other subjects that you'd like to hear about. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.